students in the previous lecture I have explained the application of linear programming in marketing area. Now we will enter into another interesting area that is in finance. Now I am going to explain the application of LP in finance area. An important problem is called portfolio management. The agenda for this lecture is application of LPP in finance that we will take an uh, important problem called portfolio management. This problem is taken from Anderson et al book. So, what is the portfolio management? Portfolio selection problems involves situation in which a financial manager must select a specific investments for example, stocks, bonds from a variety of investment alternatives. So, for a finance manager there are variety of alternatives there he has to select only certain specific investments that will maximize his return or minimize the risk that is your portfolio selection problem. So, the managers of mutual funds, credit unions, insurance companies and banks frequently encounter this type of problem. The objective function for portfolio selection problem usually is maximization of expected return or minimization of risk. The constraint usually take the form of restrictions on the type of permissible investments, state laws, company policy, maximum permissible risk and so on. These will become our constraints. Now, what is the problem? We will take a, a illustrative problem. I will explain how to use linear programming problem for portfolio management. Consider the case of a mutual fund company. They just obtained $100,000 by converting industrial bonds to cash and is now looking for other investment opportunities for these funds. The firm's top financial analyst recommends that all new investments be made in the oil industry, steel industry or the government bonds. Specifically, the analyst identified 5 investment opportunities and also given projected their annual rate of return. So, what are the 5 opportunities? They can go for Atlantic oil in oil sector, in steel sector they can go for Midwest steel, Huber steel and government bonds. This is projected rate of return. So, in this problem we are maximizing the rate of return. If you want to maximize the rate of return, how many combinations? Okay, how many combinations of investment has to be made? There are some guidelines which are given by the company. What are the guidelines? Neither industry, oil or steel, should receive more than fifty thousand dollar. The government bonds should be at least twenty five percentage of steel industry investments. The investment in Pacific oil, a high return but high risk investment, cannot be more than. 60 percentage of total oil industry investment. What, pro, what portfolio recommendations that is investments and amounts should be made available for this 100,000 dollar. We have 100,000 dollar with us. What portfolio recommendations? Where to invest? How much amount has to be invested? That has to be given by the finance manager. So, we have four uh, five alternatives A dollars invested in Atlantic oil, P dollars invested in Pacific oil, M dollars invested in Midwest steel, H dollars invested in uh, Huber steel, G dollars invested in government bonds. These are the decision variables. Our objective function is maximization of our return. So, these are the return which I have given in the previously that I brought it again. So, 6.3 percentage, 10.3 I have taken in terms of decimal value. So, this is 100,000 dollar is total amount available. So, this is A plus P Atlantic Pacific Midwest Huber and government fund that amount should not exceed our available budget. It should be equal to the second uh, guidelines is neither the oil nor the steel industry should receive more than 50,000. So, the total investment in oil and steel industry 
should not go beyond 50,000. So, there that means it should be less than 50,000 dollar. Government bonds be at least to 25 percentage of steel industry investment. So, the government bonds G should be greater than or equal to 0 0.25, there are two steel industry investment. Then the Pacific oil cannot be more than 60 percentage of total oil industry investment. So, the P should be cannot be more than that means should be less than 60 percentage of both oil industry investment. Now, I have brought the complete linear programming problem. So, this is maximization problem, we have one equal to type constraint, there is 1, 2, yeah, 2 less than or equal to type constraints, 1 greater than or equal to types, okay, there is one more another less than or equal to types, there are 3 less than or equal to type constraints. Okay. Now, I have brought this portfolio management problem to solve in Excel. This is right hand side what you are seeing is the all constraints and objective function that I have formulated uh, in a Excel. So, here we know that as usual this is the decision values where we will be getting the answer, their resources utilized, here it is objective function. There is a sign is there, there is a this is a maximization type. So, the right hand side value is given. So, go to data solver. So, when you solve it, we need answer sensitivity analysis and limits, click it. So, what we are getting, there are four, uh, five investment opportunities. In uh, A, we should uh, in invest to 20,000, in P, we should invest to 30,000. M you need not invest it, in H we should invest 40,000, in G we should invest 10,000. So, when you go for this kind of investment opportunities, your uh, objective function will be 8,000. Now, we will explain this answer report, sensitivity report. Now, I will explain the answer report, sensitivity analysis report in detail. Now, I have brought the output of solver. Okay. Now, we will interpret the answer in detail. First, look at the objective function. So, the total return is 8000 dollar. What are the different 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 investment opportunities? See that you should go for 20,000 in, uh, in A, 30,000 in B, 40,000 in H, 10,000 in G. The right hand side, you can see the reduced cost. For example, here the M is not appearing in the solutions, that means there is a negative reduced cost. And uh, there are slack variables there. So, this is our surplus, here there is a slack values is there, then there are also shadow price. I will explain this output in detail. Note that the optimal solution indicates that the portfolio should be diversified among all investment opportunities except Midwest steel. So, we should go for diversification, but we should not invest on Midwest steel. The projected annual return for this portfolio is 8000 dollar, which is an overall return of 8 percentage. The dual value for the available funds constraint provide the information on the rate of return from additional investment funds. Now, I will explain the dual value for the problem. The optimal solution shows that the dual value for the steel industry constraint is 0. This is the reason is that the steel industry maximum is not a binding constraint. So, increases in the steel industry limit of 50,000 dollar will not improve the value of optimal solution, because it is not binding constraint. So, that will not help for increasing your objective function value. Indeed, the slack variable for this constraint shows that the current steel industry investment is 10,000 dollar below its limit of 50,000, because you see right hand side is a 50,000, but the final value is 40,000. So, 10,000 
dollar is the slack variable which is not utilized already there are unutilized resources there. So, adding any extra resources will not help in improving your objective function that is why the shadow price is 0. The dual value for the other constraints are non-zero for example, here, 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 here indicating that these constraints are binding constraint. The dual value of 0 0.069 for funds available constraint shows that the value of optimal solution can be increased by 0 0.069 if one more dollar can be made available for portfolio investment. We are discussing about this one, funds available constraint, this constraint because we are having the positive shadow shadow price, positive dual value, if the fund available is increased by 1 dollar, so our objective function will increase by 0 0.069. If more funds can be obtained at the cost of less than 6.9 percentage, the management should consider obtaining them because we will be earning the more value here. However, if you return any excess of 6.9 percentage can be obtained by investing funds elsewhere other than these 5 securities. So, management should question the wisdom of investing the entire 100,000 dollar in this portfolio. What is the meaning of this one? If you are able to get a fund at the, at the interest rate of 6.9 percentage, okay, the management should go for that. If you are able to get the fund which is excess of more than this 6.9 percentage, we need not go for this 5 options, we can go for some other options where we can get the more return than this portfolio, uh, than these investment opportunities. Note that the dual value for constraint 4 is negative here, government bonds, here it is negatives. Okay. The result indicates that increasing the dual value on the right hand side of the constraint by one unit can be expected to decrease the objective function okay, because the shadow price is negative. If you increase on the right hand side by one unit, the objective function will decrease okay, by 0 0.024. Now, we will go for uh, application of linear programming problem in another application that is called financial planning. The application of linear programming to minimize the cost of satisfying a company's obligations to its early retirement program. This is our, our next applications of our LP in finance area. As a result of this early retirement, the company incurs the following obligations over the next 8 years. What are the obligations? The cash requirement in terms of 1000 dollar are due at the beginning of each year. So, because of this early retirement plan, see year 1 you need 430,000 dollar cash requirement, year 2, year 3 up to 8 year. The corporate treasurer must determine how much money must be set aside today to meet the 8 year financial obligations as they come due. The financial plan for the retirement program includes investment in government bonds as well as saving. The investment in government bonds are limited to 3 choices. What are they? Bond 1 the price is 1150 dollar, the return rate is 8.87 percentage, but years to maturity is 5 years. Second bond is price is 1000 dollar, the rate is 5.5 percentage, years for maturity is 6. The third one, the price is 1350, the rate is 11.75 percentage years to maturity is 7. The government bonds have a par value of 1000 dollar, 
which means that even with the different prices each bond pays thousand dollar at maturity. Okay, the par value is thousand dollar. The rate shows are based on the par value. For purpose of planning the treasure the treasurer assumed that any funds not invested in bonds will be placed in saving and earn interest at an annual rate of 4 percentage. So, what the problem says that the company every year they have some financial obligations. For that financial obligations decision variables f is equal to total dollars required to meet the retirement plans 8 year obligation B 1 units of bond 1 purchased at the beginning of year 1, B 2 units of bond 2 purchased at the beginning of year 1, B 3 units of bond 3 purchased at the beginning of year 1, S i amount placed in saving at the beginning of year i for i equal to 1 to 8. The objective function is to minimize the total dollars needed to meet the retirement plans 8 year obligations that is this f has to be minimized. What is the f says total dollar needed for meeting the 8 years obligations constraints. A key feature of this type of financial planning problem is that a constraint must be formulated for each year of the planning horizon. In general each constraint take the form of like this. So, the funds available at the beginning of the year from this fund funds invested in bonds and placed in savings is equal to cash obligation for the current year. So, the amount okay, initially available minus that year how much fund is invested in bonds and savings that should be equal to the cash obligation for the current year. This way the constraint needs to be formulated. So, constraint for year 1 the funds available at the beginning of the year 1 are given by F with a current price of 1150 dollar for bond 1 and the investment expressed in thousands of dollar the total investment for B 1 units of bond 1 would be 1.15 B 1. So, that much will be invested in bond 1. Similarly, the total investment in bonds 2 and 3 would be 1 B 2 because the 1000 we have taken in terms of 1000 1 B 2 and 1.35 B 3 respectively. The investment in saving for year 1 is S 1. Using these result the first year obligation of 430 we obtain constraint for year 1. So, the f is the beginning of the year how many how much amount is required then how much return from bond 1, bond 2 and bond 3 that has to be subtracted. If any bond any un, uninvested money is there that will go for the saving. So, that will fulfill the 430. So, that means the first year obligation is 430,000 dollar I have initial money right this will be invested in bonds still there are money is there that will be invested in savings, but that should meet my first year obligation 430. Constraint year 2 investment in bonds can take place only in the first year and the bonds will be held until maturity. The funds available at the beginning of the year 2 include the investment return of 8.87 percentage on the par value of bond 1 because right year 1 already we have invested. So, we will get 8.8875 percentage on the par value of bond 1 and 5.5 percentage on the par value of bond 2 and 11.75 percentage on the par value of bond 3 and 4 percentage on save, saving. The new amount to be invested in saving for the year 2 is S 2. Okay. So, with the obligation of 210 
the constraint for year 2 is like this. So, right hand side you can directly write 210 that is obligation. So, this amount okay, the bond has earned some interest okay, and the investment which have made in the year 1 also earned some interest. So, this money will be used for fulfilling the second year obligation even after fulfilling any money is left that will be invested okay, yes to. So, that is why I brought on the left hand side it will be S2, minus S2. Now, constraints for years 3 to 8 the same way we have to form the constraint for year 3, year 4, year 5 and year 6 there is a difference I will explain what is why it is 1.08. Similarly, for year 7 it is 1.055, for year 8 it is 1.17 because the bond 1 it will take 5 years for maturity. So, the first year we have matured, so in the 6th year it is coming along with the principal, principal and interest. So, the bond 2 see in the 7th year because it is maturity is 6 years in the 7th year we are coming along with the principal interest that is why it is 1.05. The bond 3 it will take 7 years. So, in the 8th year we will come along with the principal and interest that is why it is 1.17. Note that the constraint for year 6 here shows that the funds available for bond 1 is 1.0887 b 1 the coefficient of 1.08875 reflects that the fact that the bond 1 matures at the end of the year 5. As a result, the par value plus the interest from the bond 1 during the year 5 is available at the beginning of year 6. Also, because bond 1 matures in 5 years and becomes available for use at the beginning of year 6, the variable B 1 does not appear in constraint for years 7 and 8. You see that here there is no variable B 1, B 2. Note that the similar interpretation for bond 2 which matures at the end of year 6 and has the par value plus interest available at the beginning of year 7. In addition, the bond 3 matures at the end of year 7 and has the par value plus interest available at the beginning of year 8. Now, the savings in the year 8 because year 8 is the last year how we have what is the meaning why we have introduced this S 8. Okay. Finally, note that the variable S 8 appears in the constraint for year 8. The retirement fund obligation will be completed at the beginning of year 8. So, we anticipate that S 8 will be 0 and no funds will be put into savings. Even though we wrote S 8 because we have made equation such a way that that will fulfill the obligations the value of S 8 will become 0. However, the formulation includes S 8 in the event that the bond income plus interest from saving in year 7 exceeds our 255 cash requirement for year 8. Thus, S8 is a surplus variable that shows any funds remaining after the 8 year cash requirements have been satisfied. That is why we have introduced variable S8. Now, this is our complete problem. This I am going to solve with the help of solver. Now, I have brought this uh, our formulated problem to solve in Excel. So, here this is the value as usual where we are going to get the answer that is the changing cells. The right hand side is written on this side, the resources, utilized resources on resources on written here. So, now I will go to data solver look at this problem this is minimization problem. When you solve it, we need answer limit. Okay. 
Why we are saying it is a minimization? Because in the beginning of the year, we should have the minimum amount of amount, minimum requirement of amount. So, that should be invested in bonds. If it is remaining, it should be invested in savings to meet the first year obligations. That is why it is a minimization problem. So, this says the Now, I will interpret the answers and sensitivity report. Now, I have brought the Excel output. So, the value of F is 1728. So, that is the amount we required in the beginning of year 1. I will explain this slack variable and shadow price. With an objective function value this much 1728, the total investment required to meet the requirement plan's 8 year obligation that is we need because this all the values in terms of 1000, we need 1,728,797. Using the current prices of 1150, 1000, and 1350 dollar for each of the bonds respectively, we can summarize the initial investment in the three bonds as follows. So, initially we are purchasing B1 144, B2 187, B3 228. So, when you actual amount is this is quantity amount is when you multiply by their power value, when you multiply this you will getting this much answer. The solution also shows that 636,148 that is S 1 where is this one S 1 will be placed in savings at the beginning of the first year. By starting with 1728.797, the company can make the specific bond and saving investment and have enough left over to meet the retirement programs for first year cash requirement of 430,000 dollar. So, after meeting the first year requirement this much, so the remaining amount is invested is how much 636.17. The optimal solution figure shows that the decision variable S1, S2, S3 and S4 this one S1, S2, S3, S4 all are greater than 0 indicating the investment in savings are required in each of the first 4 years. However, the interest from the bond plus the bond maturity incomes will be sufficient to cover the retirement programs cash requirement in years 5 through 8 that is why no saving is required in year 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, we will interpret the dual value the dual values have an interesting interpretation in this application. Where is the dual value? Here we are having this dual value. This is our dual value. Each right hand side value correspond to the payment that must be made in that year. So, this is the this value this much amount we might be paying in that year. Note that the dual values are positive indicating that increasing the required payment in any year by 1 unit or we are having in terms of 1000. So, 1 unit would increase the total funds required for the retirement programs application by 1 times the dual value that is 1000 times. Also note that the dual values show that increases in the required payments in the early years have the largest impact. Early years look at the year 1. 2, 3 for example, year 2, 1, 3 the dual value is 0 0.96, 0 0.92. Okay. This makes sense that there is a little time to build up investment income in the early years versus subsequent years, but in the subsequent years the shadow price is lesser. So, what we are inferring from this if an organization if that organization faces increases in required payments, it would be benefit by deferring those increases to later year if possible. 
So, if they defer that payment in later years that is a good for that organization because they can have the lesser initial amount requirement. In this lecture, I have explained the application of linear programming problem in finance area. We have taken two problem, one problem is on portfolio management, another problem is on financial planning. I have uh, formulated the problem and solved with the help of Excel, then we have interpreted the results. Thank you very much.